There's a new crop of talent coming through. This guy's the best player in his region for sure. One of the crap individual players here in ANZ. There's a new bunch of players who are putting up some big performances. I think Barcode's definitely a player that people are going to have to watch out for. He's always consistent, always performing well. If you've been uh, paying attention to the region of ANZ, then you'll know the name. Barcode. 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 The Australian and New Zealand region, a region in esports that is often looked down upon when compared to others. Over the course of time we've seen players come up and shine on the international stage. As those players begin to dwindle, new talent rises through the ranks to become staple names in the scene. And for Barcode, his rapid rise to the top has been nothing short of impressive. This is the story of Alex Barcode Krismanovic. Halo 1's campaign, like I remember as a kid, that blew my mind, bro. Like, I played, replayed that campaign so much as a little kid. If I'd see my brother and dad playing Halo co-op on the couch. As Halo, you know, progressed, it, it became an insanely social game. Definitely the main, like, concepts of, like, a super soldier, you know, killing aliens and stuff like that, that really got me into it as a kid. Now I'm uh, staying into it because of the competitive side of things. As the journey progressed, Alex went from playing on the couch to finally jumping online to test his skills against the pool of players around the world. Before the name Barcode stuck, Alex's original game attack was something a little more interesting. It was Alex 2806 2001 as my old game attack, so it was my birthday. My brother and my dad, I guess, just decided on doing that name just so that people knew they were losing to an eight-year-old or something. That's what they tell me. People just called me Alex, but obviously the numbers were completely irrelevant. So people just started saying like random stuff all the time. Like uh, it, barcode wasn't the only one. There was like phone number, Alex phone number. Barcode just sort of stuck. It was just short and just easy to say, I guess. What actually got me into it was me just sort of thinking, hey, I'm sort of good at this game and I really love Halo. Like and I, I thought to myself, hey, I'm like pretty decent, you know, like I want to give competing a shot on this because it's something I'm good at and never know where it could take me. For Barcode, his introduction to the competitive side of gaming didn't come through Halo, but in the form of Counter-Strike Global Offensive. After he began to climb through the ranks of CSGO, Barcode made the jump over to Halo with the release of the Master Chief Collection on November 11th, 2014. After realising he was a cut above the average player, Barcode began to look for ways to prove himself even further in Halo 5 Guardians. In 2018, the Oceanic Halo League was created to help foster competition in the ANZ region and keep interest in the game. Alongside 4v4s, OHL ran free-for-all competitions, and this is where Barcode would begin to showcase his skills and climb the ranks. It's a team game at the end of the day, right? You know, it's very hard to put yourself out there and showcase what you are as an individual, and especially in my shoes back then, you know, Alex 2806 2001, everyone would think I'm a bot. Played these FFAs and uh, had a lot of good players in it. Like, the, there was Banner, there was Madzi, there was Slays, there was Berserk. Everyone was still playing those free for alls. What ended up happening was I won three of them back to back to back. People were pretty impressed. I was impressed in myself, dude. That's like when it also clicked in me. I was like, shit, like, I'm, you know, like, I'm not that bad. He's one shot, there's two one shots. Just stay alive, just stay alive. Just stay alive. Just stay alive. First LAN event was 2017 Melbourne. Dude, I thought I played pretty well at that event. We got a top three finish for my first LAN, so I was not complaining. Dude, it was so cool seeing everyone there, the community, like meeting these people I was talking to online and stuff for the very first time. Paradox. Talk to me about these guys. What can we expect from them? Yeah, I watched this Paradox roster, three-fourths of it play when I was in Australia earlier this year, and they had a lot of individual skill, but that was against the Australian teams. I don't know if I if that's going to be able to carry over to the North American tournaments. We've seen them over here and, and struggle and, and not place how they want to place and not play how they want to play. It, it's really key that they end Halo 5 on a note that they're comfortable with, and I'm not sure if that's going to happen this series. Coming into 2018 after a year of competing, Barcode was approached by a lineup that would later qualify and attend DreamHack Atlanta, which served as the final HCS event for the 2018 season. The lineup representing the ANZ region going into this event would consist of Madzi, Berserk, Slays, and the newly minted Barcode to round out the lineup. Unfortunately, the team was unable to pull the results they wanted and returned home to an unknown future for the region they competed in. At the time, like things were like very hopeless for our region. The mindset, we're still going to try our ass 
asses off and sweat incredibly hard to just do anything that we can in our power to. It's like such a futile position to be in, especially after three years of the game's launch. Um, we just went into that event like, yeah, let's just play, see how well we can do, you know? We can't be mad, we can't be sad about it. Just that's how the cookie crumbles. That's what cards we've been dealt with. And uh, we just went in there just thinking, all right, let's just try our best, you know? At the time, I think the goal was like just top 12. You you instantly start to react and panic in, as we saw right there, Slays up just missing a couple shots and that hurts. To refer a little bit more to what the death spoke about, and we've seen this in, in many, many times. The likes of Nade and Oxide, they might be very hot and cold players. And so you might look at one of those first series that happened. You're just like, all right, you know what? That's just kind of the run the built for them. They, they have as much as it was fun to verse those guys, you know, like it was actually, I enjoyed every series I played over there. Having close games in general with them, like was a, a bit of a, another eye opener, which was like, man, if we actually got the proper practice and stuff like that, maybe we could actually do something. That was probably the biggest take. It was an eye opener. It was so much fun, like the competitive you know, I'll live for that. Over the course of the next two and a half years, the ANZ region would sit somewhat dormant. With the COVID-19 pandemic, the region, like many, were forced to go online. With help from Halo Australia, the region would see online competition across multiple Halo titles throughout 2019, right up until the surprise release of Halo Infinite's multiplayer on November 19th, 2021. Definitely love it so far. I've really been enjoying the gameplay. A few tweaks here and there. I think the shotguns, like the Heatwave and the Shoddy, should have only one mag, so no reload. The Mango one-shot beatdown needs to go. Uh, that's very cheese. Sword is pretty iffy with me. Surprisingly enough, I'm really enjoying the equipment. I love the grapple, I love the repulsor, I love the thrust. I, I just think the gameplay actually plays very well. <sighs> I just wish there was more maps, definitely more flag game modes, and we need the sniper on more maps too. So honestly, grinding infinite has been the most fun I've had in the past, like, three years on a game. So it's definitely fresh, you know, just an enjoyable experience. Riding off the hype of Halo Infinite and being at the top, Barcode has a sight set on 2022 and what he wants to achieve. Having recently dedicated his time to full-time streaming five days a week, he has built his stream to a consistent viewer base and already hit some massive milestones and showcased some insane gameplay. Yeah, I'm coming, Metzi. I'm co nah, I'm helping Metzi on C, bro. Yeah, he's dead. I got re. Ruby, Ruby. Yeah, dead, 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 dead. Nice. Three, three, three dead. dead. Oh my god, holy shit. Holy shit. It actually helps me in other facets of like my future, you know, like building up a following, like building up that brand, you know, having people watch, you know, sub, donate and so sort of that stuff is like a safety net, you know, if the competing thing doesn't really go as planned. The support as well has been, I, I, I don't even know, man. Like every time I like talk about it, I just get a massive smile on my face as you can see, but I'm gonna keep staying on that streaming grind, minimum five days a week, you know, see where that takes me. Raid barcode. Show him some support. I will tell him congratulations on the dub. What in the fuck? Holy shit! Snipe down? What the f Oh my god, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna activate this again, bro. Holy shit! Eric Rhoda? Yo, welcome everyone! Holy shit, no way! You guys are awesome. I'm sorry about the vulgar, you know, swearing if you guys were watching, but holy crap. Appreciate it, Snipe Down, bro. Hope you enjoyed the gameplay, everyone. The future is bright for this young Halo player from Australia, with hopes of creating a chapter of his own in the ANZ Halo history books and stamping his name alongside some of our region's legendary players. We are sure we'll be right there alongside him, writing out his highs and lows for the years to come. This fight is somehow still alive, blood. Yes, somehow still alive, and barcode with the triple kill on screen. Absolutely incredible shots there from him, and he has got to be the player to watch for this ANZ team. He's got to step up big, and that triple kill could be just what the doctor ordered. That's going to give him so much confidence. With the initial release of multiplayer receiving a good reception from the pro player base across the world, Halo was back. And with an entire roadmap of online and offline events mapped out for every region, the future of Halo is looking promising. And with barcodes sitting in the wings waiting for more international opportunities, 
2022 is looking like it could be the year for the ANZ region. Honestly, 2022 looks like a pretty huge year, not just for myself, but Chiefs in general. You know, we've got our work cut out for us. We got some events, you know, that we want to practice for. We got worlds that we want to qualify for. Yeah, no, definitely just keeping the dominance up basically here and then going over there and trying to make history really, you know, place like top eight or something. And yeah, obviously qualify for worlds, you know, it would be insane to go to a worlds event. Individually though, definitely keep up the stream grind. And I've spoken a lot with my team about this as well and as an individual and been weighing and throwing up even moving internationally yeah no there's definitely some ideas and goals that i'm throwing about there but no definitely 2022 is going to be an awesome year for everyone involved i can't wait to see what it brings really like now all we just have to do is put our heads down just play the great game grind and see what happens